Hi everyone, my name is Lewis and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we're going to take a look at the upcoming Stoke-on-Trent by-election later this week and what it means for UKIP, Labour and overall the political spectrum. Please, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this type of video. Thank you. The Stoke-on-Trent election is coming on Thursday the 23rd. Many will be watching as an indicator for both how well Labour is doing nationally along with other parties, specifically UKIP, the general consensus on Corbyn's leadership ability and the ongoing debate between the Leave and Remain camps. The race for the constituency is considered close, and there's a broader picture to take a look at than the status quo of party versus party politics. Let's move on to some background information. Since the referendum, by-elections have been heavily influenced by the fact of whether or not the area voted leave or remain, such as the Richmond Park by-election at the end of last year on December the 2nd, which was triggered when incumbent Conservative MP Zach Goldsmith resigned over the government's proposal for a third runway at the nearby Heathrow Airport and decided to run as an independent. He was essentially all but officially backed by the Conservative Party who decided not to field a candidate. This was the first UK by-election since 1963 in which the Tories declined to field a candidate in a seat they had currently held. This most likely happened due to the large support within the local Tory party for Goldsmith and the fear that it would split the vote. The election campaign by the Liberal Democrats heavily focused on Brexit as the main topic, noting that Goldsmith had indeed supported Brexit in stark contrast to the Lib Dems' heavy opposition to it. Noteworthy is not only did the Green Party vote on the 2nd of November against standing a candidate and to back the Liberal Democrats, UKIP did not put a candidate forth either and in fact decided in a similar move to back Goldsmith. The election result in the end, in large part due to a sizable 72% of those in Richmond Park voting remain in the referendum, saw a shock win by the Liberal Democrats with a swing of 22% over the previously incumbent MP of the constituency, Zach Goldsmith. The scenario of the upcoming Stoke-on-Trent by-election caused by the resignation of Tristram Hunt who's decided to take up the position of director at the prestigious Victoria and Albert Museum could not be more of an opposite picture. With 69% of voters here choosing to leave the EU as a margin of 45,000, this is an area where people would likely want to send a message to Parliament regarding Brexit. In the 2010 general election, the BNP had almost double the UKIP votes here, getting a 7.7 and a 4.3% share of the vote respectively while in the 2015 general election, a diminished BNP was not able to field a candidate. UKIP's share of the vote in that election increased by nearly 23%, a big marginal increase of just over 18%. This was in part, of course, due to the massive losses that the Lib Dems suffered nationwide. However, it is indicative that UKIP mopped up these voters instead of the trend being continued that the other parties such as Labour or even the Tories normally would. This seems to be a signal that not only is there a large support to see a UKIP MP representing Stoke-on-Trent Central in the House of Commons, but that UKIP for some time now has been increasing solid grassroots support within the constituency. The candidate chosen by UKIP to run in this election is none other than its leader, Paul Nuttall, who recently took over from Farage towards the end of November last year. He's seen as a popular and powerful figure within the party, brought in to repair the divisive nature it's been in for some time. Deputy leader from 2010 until his ascension to leader, he is an experienced politician and adds further proof to the credo that this by-election is important, will be hard fought and possibly hard won if they can manage to tap into the lead voters of the area. There has however been recent controversy surrounding Nuttall. Firstly, it was declared in his nomination papers he was living in a house in Stoke that had not been moved into at the time they were filed. Channel 4 News political correspondent Michael Crick published images of that empty property without any furniture inside. You could counter this by stating he would be moving in that day. Then, on the 11th of February, Nuttall had to change from this address following attempted break-ins and hate mail, moving into another property within the constituency. While I would like to try and stay unbiased during this video, I would like to quickly state that regardless of political views, no one should be using violence or intimidation against anyone in a democracy. Furthermore, there was increased controversy toward the middle of February as accusations came against Paul Nuttall that his claims he was at the Hillsborough disaster were false. Among these assertions was a former teacher of his who stated to The Guardian that the school Nuttall was attending at the time was aware of all students attending the game and that he was not among them. This has been strongly denied by Nuttall. Days later, in an interview on a radio station based in Liverpool, he was confronted with claims on his website that he had lost close personal friends at Hillsborough and subsequently corrected that though he had not lost close personal friends, he had lost people he knew. While the subject should never really have come into the election campaign, a light is now cast on the subject of Paul Nuttall's credibility. It would be in the public's best interest if this could be cleared up once and for all so that voters know what they are voting for and don't have to rely on journalistic claims not knowing if they are true or false. Moving on to Labour's candidate, Corbyn appointed MP Jack Dromey to run Labour's by-election campaign here, someone with deep roots in the party and considered to be relatively important, in particular being treasurer of the Labour Party from 2004 to 2010. 
Gareth Snell won the selection from a shortlist of Labour candidates to stand at the Stoke-on-Trent central by-election. Snell is a member and former leader of Newcastle under Lyme Borough Council and supporter Remain in the EU referendum. Many would not expect this to bode very well in a seat in which around 70% backed leaving the European Union. In fact, Gareth Snell has caused indignation with some potential voters in the area by essentially stating on Twitter in the most elegant of words that Brexit was quote, a massive pile of shit. However, if Labour can play on the division between voters on the right, then a low turnout would suggest Labour will hold on to what is supposed to be a safe seat. While if UKIP can take away traditionally conservative voters to add to their numbers, along with a larger turnout than is usual, it is quite possible a win could be on the cards for them. Back to the analysis of voter intention, judging from the turnout at the 2015 general election and the referendum results, if UKIP can manage to harness the majority of those that voted leave, it would likely be a comfortable win for them, as those people are in the vast majority here and and prove their willingness to go to the ballot boxes during last year. This is why turnout will be closely watched on the day. With the average age of those in Stoke-on-Trent being in their late 30s, with slightly over 20% being over the age of 60, all the data suggests when it really comes down to it, the most important factor for this by-election will likely be the percentage of voter turnout, and within that, which age groups decide to come out en masse and vote. As is typical with the nationwide stats, younger people here are more likely to vote Remain and would therefore vote Labour as a counter to the UKIP candidate. With UKIP and the Tories literally neck and neck in the 2015 general election here, both getting 7,000 votes with UKIP slightly edging out second place over them with less than 40 votes in between, the voters on the right are completely split to Labour's advantage. Back to the comparison earlier of the pro-Remain Richmond Park constituency, during the 2015 general election, the Liberal Democrats lost 23.5% of the vote, yet ran an anti-Brexit campaign in Richmond Park last year and won by a shocking plus 30% to their share of the vote. This took their share of the vote from 19% in 2015 to almost 50% just one year later. This supports the case that anything really is possible here in this election and that there is a vast comparison to make in reverse. In an interesting turn of events, former Liberal Democrat leader Nick Clegg MP said while speaking at the University College of London, quote, I think there is a permanent role for a party like UKIP in British politics, and I might surprise you and say that that's exactly how it should be, end quote. While not expected to directly affect this election, UKIP supporter or not, it would have to be said that this does bode true when realising how many millions of people voted for them during the 2015 general election, and it is perhaps a growing opinion. It seems this election campaign will devolve into quite a personal battle due to the significance of the seat. For UKIP it would show that they are still a relevant force after the Brexit decision has been made, while a Labour win would help cement Corbyn's position and if it's by a large enough margin, perhaps show that the party is electable under him. However, if Labour lose this stronghold of theirs, it would send shockwaves both to the members of the party and the MPs alike. We'll all be observing closely for differing reasons I'm sure during the eve of the 23rd in what could be a long night of counting votes. That's it for me folks, be sure to subscribe for more. I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some insight. If it did, please feel free to click that like button down below and join in the debate via the comment section. See you on the next one, take care.